You see what I mean? Huh? Like, he's, like how are we supposed to start? No, I got this. Hello and welcome to our presentation that me and Gabe prepared about our torsion balance that we built with the help of our friend Graham. A torsion balance uh, is the instrument used to measure the universal gravitational constant uh, by Henry Cavendish. We wanted to recreate this experiment as a uh, supplement to our Physics 20 curriculum. We thought it would be interesting and we got some interesting results. So a torsion balance, it's a really simple device actually at its core. Um, it's essentially a bar suspended by a wire. Um, and what we did, well the original design of the experiment was it had two small masses at the end of this bar suspended in the middle by a wire. Um, at like opposite ends of that, those two small masses, like sort of clockwise, about maybe five inches away from the small masses, are large masses. Gravity is the force of attraction between any objects with mass. Normally, we don't notice this force because it's really small. We can only notice it between objects like Earth, which is massive, or sometimes tides with the moon. Um, anything else is really never a factor in everyday life. So what a torsion balance does is it measures this very, very, very tiny force of attraction um, and it scales it up to a measurable amount that we, can, uh, that we can measure. He did it in 1797. Um, he had in his garden shed, um, I believe it was about baseball sized uh, lumps of lead at two ends of um, a rod suspended by a thin wire. I believe it was a quartz thread. Um, and then about nine inches away from those uh, baseball sized pieces of lead were two 12 inch diameter, 458 pound lead masses. Now, these are really heavy masses and the force of gravity between them is still really, really minuscule. So he had a little peephole that he could look into his uh, garden shed um, and he could measure this very tiny deflection um, that this force of attraction would produce. Uh, you can see the wire suspending the beam here and the uh, beam oscillating as the forces around it kind of even out and it'll approach a single point called the equilibrium point. That equilibrium point is gonna shift depending on what forces are present. So why did Henry Cavendish have a peephole in his shed instead of just walking into the shed and looking at things? The reason he didn't enter his garden shed is because this device is extremely sensitive to any perturbations. Um, even opening a window or opening a door to walk in would produce air currents that would totally jiggle the rod about and would really ruin all of his uh, measurements. So here's our experimental setup. We set it up in a detached garage this is good because there aren't any uh, air currents caused by air conditioning or heating. So here on the right side of the screen is the ladder that is supporting the rod with the two small masses at the end of it. You can't see the wire, but it's being suspended from the middle of the ladder and the rod is here at the bottom. So in the middle of the rod is a, a little piece of mirror. This is important because we can shoot a laser at the mirror on the rod, and when the rod turns, this moves the dot across a background that we can set up. If we know the distance that the dot moves, and the distance between the board and the mirror, we can use trigonometry to find out by how much this rod turned. Here you can see the dot oscillating back and forth. Uh, you'll see the amplitude uh, getting larger before slowly coming towards a single point. This is expected behavior as if there are no forces acting on the uh, beam, it should just tend towards a single point without moving wildly. While the behavior of the torsion balance was normal and expected when the large masses weren't present, the second we started adding those two steel bricks, we saw behavior that we couldn't fully explain. You can see here the dot getting further and further away. Going off of the board, slowing down, slowing completely, speeding up. This is not what we'd expect from this test. So you only observed that 
wild oscillation when you had the masses there, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, were there other con variables that you needed to control when you were setting up your experiment? When we, um, well, when we walk into the room, um, we introduce air currents that we'd have yeah. to let settle down. That's okay. a variable. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, so there are other variables we had to control when we were setting up the experiment. Every time we walked in, we introduced new air currents into the room. Um, so in order to let those uh, kind of uh, calm down, we had to wait usually around 45 minutes for it to start getting good results. Um, yeah, that, that, would, that would be the biggest one, I think, was our entering and exiting of the room. We also played with different uh, distances between the large and small masses to see if that would yield different effects, but uh, we could not find a place where uh, unexpected behavior like this didn't happen. One thing that we all learned, I think, is to uh, not bias our results in our experiment. We were all very, very excited to find a value for the universal gravitational constant, and that meant that we sometimes saw results that weren't actually there. We kind of stretched things in favor of us, and that is a huge no in science. Um, we learned that we're not immune to it, uh, and it's something that I am definitely going to be looking out for in the future when doing something like this. Do you think you would have been able to communicate your learning in this project um, as effectively in, on a, like a paper and pencil exam as you have through uh, conversations that we've had? No, I, I don't think that we would have been able to communicate what we've done in this experiment as well uh, on a paper and pencil. Uh, there are nuances in the way that you present something that are just impossible on paper and pen. Um, there's a lot that can be brought to the table by physically talking about something, uh, and I'm glad that we had the opportunity to do so. I think the most important part about um, doing an oral presentation like this is not whether or not you flounder, but it's how you react to unexpected questions and how you um, can pull thoughts uh, out of nowhere almost. Um, and I think being able to do that uh, really better than essays demonstrates um, a good understanding of the, of the subject.